Hi, it's Janie here, and I was going to show you a masculine card that I made using Lindy Stamp Gang products, and you can just see all the shimmer and glimmer, and mica fragments that are part of the Frontage line from Stampendous, and um, these are the tea stain fragments. I used these on my Christmas cards and loved them. And they're, they're really interesting and different, and I was going to show you how to do it. These, I just laid the um, glue down and sprinkled them over. And this, I cut out a thin piece of chipboard with my um, digital die cutting machine, and I made the template myself. I'm the cut file for it myself. And then I um, put glue over this and sprinkled the fragments on. And it's that easy. And then later you just kind of clean off your edges with your finger. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, on my Christmas cards, you can even see where I glued it onto a strip of paper and then I cut through it and it gave me perfectly even lines, which I wanted on the Christmas card. But on this one, I wanted a rougher line, a more natural line. But you can see here where you get a really clean line if you want it. So, let me show you how to do this. Believe it or not, this color choice happened by mistake. It was a happy accident. Um, I went and grabbed the wrong bottle at the wrong time and sprayed it and then ended up getting a combination that I really liked. First of all, I take watercolor paper and cut it five and a half, um, five by eight. And I have an Anna Griffin cuddle bug embossing folder that's five by seven. And what I do in order to get this on top and this on bottom, let's see if I can show you in color that shows up a little more. I have the different pattern there and there. I go ahead and emboss it with the this end flush with um, the big embossing folder and then believe it or not you can go in there'll be a little space here but there'll be some embossing left over but you can go in with this border um, embossing strip and emboss it and then even though this is completely embossed up here you can put it on this end and emboss it again and most watercolor papers and linen papers will take it just fine and you don't even see where any of the other embossing was. You get a crisp, clear impression and you don't see where the other one had been. Some of my other cheaper water, um, cheaper card stocks show um, that it has been embossed twice, but these thicker papers don't. So that's how I get around. Um, a lot of embossing filters aren't as large as this. And when I'm making a large card like that, that's how I get around the embossing filter not being quite as big. Sometimes I just do one end. That's fine. And sometimes I want to do both ends. Let me show you how I colored it. It uses a lot of product, but it is so worth it. This is my spray box, and it is well loved. I keep an old um, sales catalog in here, and let it catch a lot of it. And it also, the way it curls up naturally since it's gotten wet, supports the paper without it being down flat against something that where the um, product pulls and gets all over it. So I'm going to put those in there. I'm going to use Smoky Sapphire. It's a Starburst burst spray. I'm going to use Cowabunga Copper.
and Tibetan poppy teal and you'll see it looks like a dark green on here but it's really this color blue and just the combination of all of them together gives you that effect so and I might even use a little bit of Treasure Island Aqua but first I'm going to go in with my blue and I have got the wrong side of that going up no worries And I put quite a bit of the blue. And then start adding the browns. I emboss it first so that the liquid can sink into the recesses and give you a really neat effect that way when it pulls into pulls into it there. I'm going to dry it and leave it in the box and dry it because I want to go in and add a little more when it's all done. that you're going for you could stop right here it's beautiful you're getting some of the teals and the sapphire blue shimmer shining through if you hold it just right and the browns I'm gonna go a little bit darker so I'm going to add some more it's hard to get the exact same look as before but you know just play with it and see what's working for you let me see what else I'm gonna go ahead and bring a little copper in there because I'm using the mica fragments and I wanted this shade um, in the background because it goes so well with the mica fragments Okay, for the matte layer of the card, I have cut a piece of cardstock that is slightly larger than the embossed piece I was working with earlier. And I have sprayed some of the Calabunga Copper Spray onto the craft mat, and I'm brushing it on with a paintbrush. You could also get some of the old baldy caps from Lindy Stamp Gang or from Scruff It Up Do, and um, screw that on into, instead of the sprayer but this was just easier for me to grab at the moment than to um, look for the my extra caps and then I just spray that on and let it dry I'm using up every little bit that's on the mat
To add the mica flakes to the chipboard, first I'm going to put some of the Calabunga Copper Spray on the chipboard just because if I miss a spot and the mica, um, when I'm putting the mica on, then this will help hide the background and hide any of the spots that I've missed with the mica. I've, it may be unnecessary because the mica covers really well, but I just it makes me feel better. Now I'm hitting the very edges, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to use a paintbrush is to get the very edges of the chipboard so that it doesn't shine out show that the edges won't actually be covered in the mica flakes and so they need to be hidden. I'm just taking regular Aline's tacky glue. I spread some onto the um, cardboard or chipboard and I work in segments and so I'm going to spread it on and I just use my finger because that's what I do and spread it out so that it's even and I have the coffee filters down there to catch the mica flakes as I'm going. I have two because I use one to catch the mica flakes and then I put the jar on top of the other coffee filter and um, to catch anything that might fall when I'm adding those mica flakes back to the jar. Right there I've run my fingers over the edges and it just pushes the mica flakes to where you get a smooth edge. And so I finished covering the elk part in the mica flakes. Now I'm using score tape or actually miracle tape from scrap a dub doo to adhere my water paper panel to the card or to the mat. I've put so much spray on that that it's starting to curl slightly so the heavier tape heavier than your ATG gun tape will hold it better and keep it from curling and sometimes I go in and put ATG gun tape in the middle of the places that I added the miracle tape I'm just trimming the edges there because I didn't get it exact. And I'll take the tape backing off. I just burnish this tape down with my finger instead of using a scraper because it is embossed and I didn't want to take any of that embossed detail away. now I'll go in, um, this time I'm going in with Scotch Quick Dry on the edges and on the areas between where I have the tape. And since this is watercolor paper, it's really thick and um, you won't notice the glue coming from the other side. Whereas thin paper, you might see glue shut um, from the top of your card. And I've got a little bit that squirted out right there and I just wipe it off. And then because it's embossed, I'm wiping on the underside to help get the tape attached because the tape is pressure sensitive and you need to kind of press it into your project. And I'm doing the same thing with the matte layer. Now this was regular card stock, but to it was painted on the edges, so to keep it from curling, I'm making sure I put tape on the very edges. And now I have, I'll press the tape down a little more. If you're having trouble getting your backing piece to come off, press it down more. Now, I'm going to carefully get it on the card and hopefully I get it straight. I'm just using a cardstock card face that was 8.5 by 11 and I fold, scored it in the middle and folded it. Now, since the mica has dried on this piece, I am going back through and wiping the um, top layer 
to see if any mica comes off so that it's not falling all over the place when I give the card to someone. And then I'm going around on the edges and if there's any rough edges of this piece, you just press with your finger and it comes off. I've also used a straight pen to get some of the little bitty holes that I covered up with the mica flex. And it, it comes off very easily. Now I've taken glue and I've just run some um, strings of glue, bands of glue, over the panel and then I'll pour the mica flakes directly onto the card. If you wanted straight lines, a smooth straight line, you could attach the mica flakes to another piece of cardstock and cut it get straight lines but on these I want the lines to be a little more natural and I'll show you in just a second what that looks like I'm just pushing and making sure the mica flex get in the right spot sometimes they want to hang out or clump up and you can just easily move them with your finger and if you miss a spot just sprinkle a few more on that area doing the other side just the same get a little bit closer I press the flex down before I shake the excess off so that I'm making sure that it gets contact with the glue and see how they've pumped up right there I'm just moving it around with my finger there's a little bit hanging out right there I'll just push it out of the way and when the glue's wet it's really easy to do And if I miss a spot, you go back in and shake the excess off, just like you would glitter. But the mica flex don't cling to you as much as glitter does. Now I'm just going to use Scotch Quick Dry to glue the elk piece onto the card front. I make sure I get lots of glue so it doesn't want to curl. And there we are, the finished card. I love the Micah Flakes, and I hope you try them. Thanks for watching. Bye.